We will be reading for you today excerpts from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Letter from Birmingham Jail, dated April 16, 1963. My dear fellow clergymen, while confined here in the Birmingham City Jail, I came across your recent statement calling my present activities unwise and untimely. Seldom do I pause to answer criticism of my work and ideas. If I sought to answer all the criticism that crossed my desk, my secretaries will have little time for anything other than such correspondence in the course of the day. And I will have no time for constructive work, but since I feel that you are a man of genuine goodwill and that your criticisms are sincerely set forth, I want to try to answer your statement in what I hope will be patient and reasonable terms. Several months ago, the affiliate here in Birmingham asked us to be on call to engage in a nonviolent direct action program. We readily consented, and when the hour came, we lived up to our promise. So I, along with several members of my staff, am here because I was invited here. I am here because I have organizational ties here. But more basically, I am in Birmingham because injustice is here. I cannot sit idly by in Atlanta and not be concerned about what happens in Birmingham. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Never again can we afford to live with the narrow provincial outsider agitator idea. Anyone who lives inside the United States can never be considered an outsider anywhere within the bonds. We know through painful experience that, that freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. Frankly, I have yet to engage in a direct action campaign that was well-timed. In the view of those who have not suffered unduly from the disease of segregation, for years now, I have heard the word wait. It rings in the air of every Negro with pissing familiarity. This way has almost always meant never. We must come to see with one of our distinguished jurors that justice too long delayed is justice denied. Oppressed people cannot remain oppressed forever. The yarning for freedom eventually it manifests itself. And that is what has happened. S something with happened to the ne American Negro. Something within has reminded him of the birthright of freedom. And something without has reminded him that it can be gained. One should readily understand why public administrations demonstrations are taking place. But though, I was initially disappointed at being categorized as an extremist. As I continue to think about the matter, I gradually gained a measure of satisfaction from the label. Was not Jesus an extremist for love? Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Before closing, I feel impelled to mention one other point in your statement that has troubled my, me profoundly. You warmly commended the Birmingham Police Force for keeping order and preventing violence. I doubt that you would have so warmly commended the police force seeking if you had seen it start sinking their teeth into unarmed, nonviolent Negroes. I doubt that you would so quickly commit, it, commit the policemen if you were to observe their ugly and inhumane treatment of Negroes here in city jail. 
If you were to watch them push and curse old Negro men and young Negro girls, if you were to see them slap and kick old Negro men and young boys, if you were to observe them as they did on two occasions, refused to give us food because we wanted to sing our grace together. I cannot join you in your praise of the Birmingham Police Department. I wish you had commended the Negro sit-in and the dem demonstrators of Birmingham for their sublime courage, their willingness to suffer, and their amazing discipline in the midst of a great provocation. Never before have I written so long a letter. I am afraid it's too much long to take your precious time. I can assure that it would have been much shorter if I had written from a comfortable desk. But what else can one do when he is alone in a narrow jail cell? other than write long letters, think long thoughts, and pray long prayers. If I have said anything in this letter that overstates the truth and indicates an unreasonable impatience, I beg you to forgive me. If I have said anything that understates the truth and indicates my having a patience that allows me to settle for anything less than brotherhood, I beg God to forgive me. I hope this letter finds you strong in the faith. I also hope that circumstances will soon make it possible for me to meet each of you, not as an integrationist or a civil rights leader, but as a fellow clergyman and a Christian brother. Let us all hope that the dark clouds of racial prejudice will soon pass away and the deep fog of misunderstanding will be lifted from our fear-drenched communities. And in some not too distant tomorrow, the radiant stars of love and brotherhood will shine over our great nation with all their scintillating beauty. Yours for the cause of peace and brotherhood, Martin Luther King Jr. Thank you.